good morning friends this is a car park basement level of a high rise building so if i zoom this level you can see they have given only only one zone control wall for the entire floor level so we need to know how to decide the number of zone control wall for any kind of building for any floor level so in this video what we are going to see mainly we will see what is the working principle of the zone control wall then we will see where we need the zone control wall and where we don't need the zone control wall and, uh, and we will see how many zone control wall we need to decide or uh, we need to install for each floor level and uh, flow switch installation rules the zone control wall has the flow switch so water flow switch we will see what is the installation rule for the flow, uh, flow switch and we will see what is the section drain wall sizing and finally we are going to see what is the test wall sizing. So coming to the floor control wall assembly components, we have the vertical riser. From the vertical riser, the very first item what we have is the floor control wall with the supervisory switch. And the second item is the check wall, which is the optional item, it's not compulsory. And the third item is the pressure gauge. So like you see here, we should have the pressure gauge. And the fourth item is the flow switch or water flow indicator. And finally, we have two branch line. One is going like this and another is going like this. So coming to this sign, if you want to drain the full system, we, we can use the sectional drain wall assembly and coming to this side we have two arrangement one is the side glass so the water flowing can be seen from uh, uh, outside so this next item is the test wall so we have the test wall and we have the sectional drain wall in the bottom side so this is the total assembly we have for the zone control wall and coming to the working principle of the system you know that zone control walls are assembled on fire pipeline to separate the fire area into small distribution zone for indication and control so the in our project which i, as I showed you know we have a very big area that's a compartment area like a, a car parking compartment area and there we have one zone control wall in some big areas we have multiple zone control walls will come so if you have a fire indication on particular location so we can easily identify where we have the fire so zone control was assembled in that way so the fire area can be distributed to multiple small areas so because of the fire sprinkler or test wall activation the indicator directs water flow and transmits signal to control system so normally what happens so we have here the we have the control cable which is connected with this wall so water flow switch normally we are using the two core 1.5 mm square cable so this will be connected like a loop system like for example you have the multiple zone control wall so here we have one zone control wall riser and here also we have zone control wall so it will be acting like a loop system and finally it will be connected with our uh, control devices so we normally use two core 1.5 mm square cable for this uh, control cable and the next one here uh, the this signal indicates in which zone the activation has taken place. So once the water is uh, going through the system because of the fire sprinkler activation or test wall uh, activation. So the because of the water flowing through the system, it will create the signal. So the signal indicates in which zone the activation has taken place. We can easily we, we can easily identify from the uh, water uh, signal. So here the next one, when required, the isolation wall can be closer to isolate the system downstream of the wall. So here, like you see, like you see in this image, so here we can completely close this downstream of the water sprinkler system by closing the isolation wall from here. The next very important thing is where required, zone control wall assembly shall be provided in building exceeding two stories. So when there is more than two level, for example, we have a building. So with the ground floor, first floor and second floor. So there are the three stories, for example, second floor also. So here how many stories we have? So ground floor, first floor, second floor and third floor. So if it is exceeding two stories, then we have to provide the zone control wall. So this is the first case and where not required. Floor control assembly is not required for dry system in parking garages is not required. And the second important, very important rule is floor control wall assembly shall not be required where the total area of all floor combined doesn't exceed the system production area limitation as per the NFA 13. So first we will see what is the NFA 13 requirement for the different hazard. For light hazard occupancy 4830 meter square. So for example you have one uh, floor level which, which the area is exceeding 4830 meter square then you have to provide additional zone control wall. For ordinary hazard the same one 4830 meter square I will show you an example also for this one and extra hazard 3720 meter square high piled storage 3720 meter square and indirect storage it is 3720 meter square we will see one example now. 
In this high risk building, for example, if you see the second basement floor area, they have given 3023 square meter and first basement also same 3023 and ground floor to till the roof floor you can see all this area they have given one by one 1400 1800 so for all floor they have given the floor area so what nfa 13 says for the light hazard occupancy if the floor area is exceeding 4830 meter square then we have to go with the additional floor control wall so in our example for example you see this one our case the ground floor to eighth floor all these are apartment buildings so apartment building comes under light hazard so light hazard as per NFA 13 if the area exceeds 4830 that is important 4830 square meter then we have to provide additional zone control wall so till that level one zone control wall is sufficient so in our case uh, ground floor to eighth floor all are light hazard so from here to here you can see the floor area which is not exceeding 4830 meter square that means only one zone control wall is sufficient for the full area and coming to the second basement and first basement this all are the car parking area so car parking area comes under not light hazard it comes under ordinary hazard so as per NFA 13 just now we saw that for ordinary hazard also we have the same issue that uh, is exceeding 4830 meter square we have to provide additional zone control wall so here also our floor area didn't exceed 4830 so full project each level only one zone control wall is sufficient I mean uh, each floor we have to provide one one zone control wall so each floor one zone control wall we have to provide and here one very very important thing you have to keep in your mind so if you see this area we have the storm water tank is there and uh, we have the staircase is there and we have the plenty of uh, sometimes the water supply tank will come sometimes the chilled water uh, sometimes uh, irrigation tank will come so there are different different tanks also will come in the basements area so this time what you have to do uh, when you take the area you don't you should not take uh, combine all the area for example this is the storm water tank there is no sprinkler okay so you have to take the area which is uh, where the sprinkler coverage is there that means the sprinkler coverage area for example when you take the area you can take the full area but you have to deduct this value because there is no sprinkler at uh, this level so you have to remove this uh, area for example if you are measuring the total area just for example the area comes like 4000 4000 square meter minus you have to remove this area for example this is 100 meter square so 4000 minus 100 so this is called 3900 square square meter area so this is the actual sprinkler production area so this area only you have to compare for the compare with the nfa 13 and here one important rule uh, you have to see thing. floor control wall assembly shall not be required where the total area of all floor combined that doesn't exceed the system production area so i'll show you one example here for, for example, you can see the light hazard, they have given 4830 meter square. For example, you have uh, ground floor, first floor and second floor, ground floor, first floor and second floor. So this, this side it is 1000 meter, meter square, 1000 meter square, 1000 meter square. So total combined area is only uh, 3000 meter square. So what NFA 13 says, if the total combined area is not exceeding the production area, that means 4830 meter square, you don't need to provide the zone control wall. So sometimes normally we can provide only one zone control wall, but uh, NFA 13 says that clearly the total area of all floors, so in our case, uh, 1000, 1000, 1000, total 3000. So total area of all floor combined doesn't exceed the system production area. So for the light hazard, it is 4830, but in our case, it was only 3000 meter square. So if you follow, if you have this type of thing, then no need of zone control wall assembly. The next two important thing is the floor, floor switch installation rule. So you can see the point B here and also here also we have some dimension is there. So the B is a specific dimension to ensure correct operation of water flow director. So B normally what happened, uh, the, this is the, uh, your, uh, control wall and here's the water flow switch the distance the distance between the control wall and the water flow switch should be normally minimum 600 mm so this is what b i have indicated and coming to after this one we are taking the line for the sectional drain wall so this normally 2 into d the so 2 into d means suppose the pipe size is 100 mm means 2 into 100 mm so that means this should be 200 mm so some manufacturer recommend minimum 150 mm also 
So this B as I indicated here 600 mm is a common practice but addition to that uh, that one some manufacturer have a specific value for each sizes. For example if you see one famous manufacturer called as a rapid drop. So for different pipe sizes they have given 2 inch, 2.5 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch, 6 inch like that. For different pipe sizes they have recommended the B value. You can see for the 2 inch line it is uh, 981 should be there and 2.5 inch it is 997 should be there for example 18 inch should be 1.033 so these are the different recommendations based on the different pipe size that they have given but practical case normally we are keeping minimum of 600 mm for the uh, flow switch to the isolation wall the next one is the sectional drain sizing for example this is your drain riser which is coming from top and each level it will be connected with uh, this zone control wall drain connection so here we have the sectional drain which is going and connecting with the main drain, drain riser so we are going to see how to size this uh, pipe size so for example you can see the nfe 13 requirement that the drain size we have to refer this table the riser or main size so based on the riser or main size we can decide the size of the drain connection for example till 2 inch it has to be uh, 20 mm on larger and for example 2 2.5 inch 3 inch and 3.5 inch we have to follow 32 mm on larger and means 1.25 inch and larger for 4 inch and larger for the main and uh, riser and main size you have to follow the drain size of 50 mm and larger and so there is one more rule that when where drain connection for floor control wall are tied to a common riser the drain riser shall be one pipe size larger downstream of each size the, the rule is very simple for example this is your main drain riser and here you have the zone control wall so this is the zone control wall so this zone control wall drain is connecting with the, your main drain riser this is your main drain riser and zone control wall drain line is connected with the main drain riser so for example this main size uh, this main drain size let's say that this is 2.5 inch this is 2.5 inch so what they are telling the the drain riser shall be one pipe size larger downstream of each size for example this is 2.5 inch mean one size lower at uh, this connection size that means this should be 2 inch so the larger of the drain size that means the main line drain should be 2.5 inch means the branch line which is connected should be at least one size lower that means 2 inch okay it cannot it is not allowed like this is one 2.5 inch this is also 2.5 inch that is not allowed so this will be 2.5 inch means this should be 2 inch so one size lower and uh, in this video we are going to see the last section that is the inspected test wall sizing so we have the inspector test wall uh, connection here so coming to the inspector test wall uh, you can see this uh, concept the test wall for the spindler system combines the function of uh, test and drain for wet spindler system so both the testing is possible and drain is possible for example if you open the wall you can see the water flowing to the system through the side glass which is located at this point also you can use this one for the drain connection for mainly mainly for the if you want to drain more amount of water if the spindler is activated if you want to drain more amount of water very quickly we normally use the sectional drain that we discussed earlier so but drain also also possible with this one and coming to the next one this wall have to uh, have to have same diameter with the sprinkler orifice diameter so test wall have drain orifice having k factor 5.6 or 4.2 first we will see what is the orifice size of the different uh, sprinkler system for example you can see the k value which i have given here k value starting from 1.4 to 14 i have shown here it, it comes more also so till 25.2 we, we have the sprinkler k factor so here for example uh, if you see K5.6, the orifice sizes, the opening size will be, it is 13 mm and K11.2, for example, it is 16 mm. This is what they are calling the orifice, uh, the orifice size of the each spindler. So, for example, this is the supply connection. So, here we have different spindler located operates. For example, let's say we have lots of operate spindlers are there and the operate spindler with K factor is 5.6. So, K factor 5.6 different spindlers are located here. For example, if you have K factor 5.6, you have other spindler with K, K factor 8. We have to consider the lowest K factor value. So, lowest K factor here is K 5.6, not K factor 8. So here K factor 5.6 means you can see from the stable K 5.6 means the orifice size should be 13 mm. So coming to the test wall size. So what they mentioned here the test wall have drain orifice having K factor of 5.6 or 4.2 or different optionals also it will come. So in our case we have K 5.6 and K 8. K 5.6 is the lowest one. K 5.6 you saw the orifice opening size that was like 13 mm uh, orifice opening size for the K 5.6. So the test wall have drain orifice same 13 mm. So the orifice size of the test wall will be also 13 mm of the 
uh, spindler. So this is how we size the test wall orifice size. And coming to the working pressure, uh, it should be normally 300 psi. We normally prefer. And the body of the test orifice wall normally it is the brass wall, like you see here. It's a brass wall. So like you see in this image, uh, you can see the dia. So dia normally they have given 1 inch, 1.25 inch, 1.5 inch, 2 inch. So there are di different dia can come. But mainly the orifice size is depends on the Spingler K factor orifice size. So I hope uh, you are very clear for any type of building you can decide uh, how many zone control wall required for uh, that building at that floor level. And you are very clear with the working principle of zone control wall and what are the assemblies we have. And also you are very clear with the sectional wall sizing. Then we have the inspector test connection sizing, test wall sizing. So that all we discuss about zone control wall. So thank you for watching the video. If you have still, uh, if you still have any doubt, please add your comment in the comment section. Take care. Bye bye.